Are you ready? That is the title to this study today, folks. And grab your Bibles or a marker and a pen or pencil or something like that and make some of these references because Connie and I are going to be reading quite a bit uh, out of the Word of God today. I'm going to start, a uh, really good place to start is at the end, right? Uh, Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that bear, uh, hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Starting in verse 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit of the Lord's uh, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard him behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying verse 17 and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall hear, be hereafter. Folks, I want you to understand that this is the starting of what we are going through today. John was writing this, and keep in mind, I want to bring out who is writing this. This is the same, at one time was the young man who is now an older man in his early 90s. And he is now on this Isle of Patmos. He's been sent there by an evil leader who thinks he's getting rid of that old John. But this same John, several years earlier, as the gospel said, was the one that Jesus loved. He wrote the gospel of John, and he wrote the epistles to the church a few years later, uh, to us, to, to them at that time, and to us today. And he saw Christ Jesus as the Son of Man, 100% in the flesh, he ate with him. They slept in the same quarters. He went around and talked and taught with this Jesus. Jesus taught him what to say. He was one of the, if not the leader of the apostles uh, from the church there at Jerusalem. And he saw this man, Christ Jesus, in his earthly flesh. And now then, when we read these words here, he fell at his feet as one that was dead. Because now then, this same Jesus has been on the cross he looked from the cross and he pointed to this man with his eyes and with his head and he said, John, behold thy mother, and woman, behold thy son. And he bowed his head and he died. He stayed three days in, in uh, the grave. And it said right there where I read this, uh, I'm the, uh, in verse 18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and of death. When he was raised from the dead, he ascended on high, and this man is witnessing him now. 
I want to ask you the question, just as this man lived his life with Christ Jesus for several years here on this earth, he prayed with him, he saw him, he dealt with him on a daily basis, and now then he sees him, he hears him. It said as it was a trumpet, and, and anything and everything that was going on was all pushed to the side because of what he heard and saw with this man in the Revelation. Let me ask you today, as we start off this lesson, are you ready? Are you ready to behold what is being revealed to this man here? He saw and is seeing and is telling about the glorified risen Son of God. Was with him for several years as the Son of Man here on this earth. Fully capable in the flesh, but dealt with mankind on a daily basis. And now he sees him as the glorified 100% Christ Jesus. And it says in the Revelation here, who he is now and who he is forevermore. Are you ready to see him? As we're reading these, I want to ask this question throughout this study. Are you ready? Folks, we see what's going on in our world today. I want you to turn with me now to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, and I want to read more of what's going to go on and uh, an, about another transformation that happened to a man named Saul, and he was from... Uh, persecuting the church until he was transformed by the Heavenly Father. He met Jesus on the Damascus Road. Let me read what 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says. And if I don't give you, for the folks that are following along out there, if I don't say the verse, that means I'm starting in verse number 1. Just keep that in mind. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it'll be verse number 1, just like there in Revelation chapter 1, started in verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. This is your daily lifestyle now. You've received the gospel of Christ Jesus. Verse 2 says, By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I uh, delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And if you follow on and keep on going down through there, there are several witnesses that saw him. That's 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15. Let's go again to another one, and I want to, uh, I think Connie's, uh, no, yeah, Connie's going to read these here. We're going to kind of ping pong back and forth. But I want, I want to keep asking the question, are you ready? We have seen and been revealed now through uh, Revelation chapter 1, the things which were, the things which are, and the things which are going to be or are uh, coming soon. As you see things that are going on in the world today, you are asking questions. What's going on? What should I be doing? Where is the Lord Jesus? Where's the promise of his coming? Well, we're told those questions are going to be going on. But believer out there, listen, I want you to calm down. I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to listen to this study. These are the things that we need to focus on today. God is in charge. Jesus is on his throne. If you're a true believer, like we said last week, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, you have his spirit in you. If you if you don't, you're none of his. This doesn't make sense to you. You might as well uh, turn it on to uh, Arkansas State Troopers or Bonehead Truckers of the Week because this doesn't make sense to you. But if you're one of his, you need to listen to this and be full of joy because the Word tells us what's going on. Uh, Connie, what does uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 say? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now ye know that uh, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. 
And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh my goodness. Now, do you see that going on in the world? Kind of, do yes. you see this unrighteousness going yes. on? Now, I want to remind you of what I just read, and I want you to compare that with what Connie just read. Same writer, Paul, to the church at Corinth in 15, 1 Corinthians 15, said in uh, verse number 1, this this gospel that I have declared unto you, that I've preached to you, the, the truth, the good news, which also you have received. What Connie just read in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, if you'll notice in verse number 10, it says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Do you see the comparison there? Do you see what's going on there, Connie? Do you see the contradiction mm -hmm. there? We have received it. If you are a child of God today, the truth has been revealed to you. The Lord in heaven has opened your eyes and allowed you to understand, understand Scripture, the ending of Luke again. Love it. You need to read it, last chapter of Luke. And you understand Scripture. You understand what's coming, at, the word coming out of my mouth. You understand that today because this is the truth and your ears hear it and your heart is pricked going, that's the word of God. You have received it. But these here, I want you to notice there, what she just read, look at verse number eight again. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Folks, we do not have to understand. We do not have to understand every little detail about what's going on, nor do we need to live in fear. We are not appointed until th uh, to this day of wrath. We will be taken up, and we're going to get to that in the next few uh, readings here shortly. We will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. I do not want to sit under and be under this wicked one. I do not have to live in fear because of the Antichrist and the false prophet. I do not have to live in fear about what that idiot Pope is doing over there. I do not have to worry about that idiot Biden in the White House and what he's doing today. I don't have to worry about that. Because King Jesus is on the throne. Amen. I don't have to worry or live in fear or live in my closet and, and shudder and, and, and move about like I don't know what's going on, folks. The Word of God has revealed what is going on. And the one that is going to let, the Holy Spirit of God, she just read it, is going to open up his arms one of these days and going to say, okay, go get him, tiger. And it's all under God's control. Have you received this word? Are you ready for the day that the Lord is going to call his church home? Because, folks, thereafter, we're going to be in heaven. But when, when it's time, there's another day coming. It's called the day of the Lord. Okay? So let's get to that also. There's so much more in those verses right there. But for time's sake, we're going to move right along. Go with me to... Um, I still want to ask you the question throughout this. We're going to... Should we be persevering in persecution. Yes. Yes, we should. We're told that. We're told we're going to go through, we said this last week and week four, there are little T's, tribulation, that each individual or, uh, of, of God, each individual child of God goes through on your own and as a family and as a church and as the body of Christ, each local church and as the body of Christ. There's persecution. The devil hates us. The world hates us, okay? We're going to go through persecutions. you got to understand that. It, that we're not tiptoeing tip through the tulips on our way to heaven. We're going through persecution. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Lord hated our Savior. The world hated our Savior without a cause. He told us that, so it shouldn't be a surprise. It's not a surprise. Nothing should surprise a Christian. Did you know that? Let me say it again. Nothing should surprise a Christian. Let me read it to you out of First Thessalonians chapter um, four. And Connie, are you going to read some of that also? Or? I'm supposed to start with uh, verse you 13. Read. Yeah, Connie's going to read. Listen to these words here. Listen and, and perk up here. I hope you're either turning your Bibles or at least writing these down. She'll have them on the screen too, or most of them. Uh, uh, say again where you are. Uh, 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 15. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, until that day, walk around humped over like you beat down. What does it say? Comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another, folks. What we just read there, what the Bible just said there, that's called the, uh, the, 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 the sudden coming, the sudden calling of us away from this world. That word, when it said caught up, a lot of people say, well, the word rapture is not in there. Well, yes, it is. Down at the footnotes in my Bible and Connie's too, I want to read what she wrote. Caught up. To catch away quickly, to seize by force. Notice that I, I want I want I want to put it this way. I want to put it in Sammy's way. The host of heaven stands up on the day when Father God looks over and says, "Time to call him home." Well, Michael the archangel goes out. There's the trump of God that's about to read. It's, it's ready to sound, and the heavens opens up, and everybody's peering over to the side, and King Jesus stands up and goes. <clears throat> I've got this. And he calls us home. He says, come up hither. And those that are in Christ, the dead in Christ, shall rise first. Because why? They're just asleep. They're asleep in their graves right now. And you and I that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. The Lord calls us home. It's called the rapture. Rapapur in the old uh, Latin Vulgate, rapture, to be caught up, mm -hmm. to be seized by force, to move to a new place, rescued from danger. That's, That's right. what that means, okay? Are you ready for that? Let me continue to ask that question. Are you ready? The next one is in uh, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty one. to go along with that, with are you ready? Listen to what is going to happen. That's Paul ta talking to the uh, Thessalonican church. Listen to what he says to the Corinth church, church of Corinth. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58. It says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Like I just said, if you have someone that's out there in the graveyard right now, and you moan and groan over them, and you miss them so much, but if they were a child of God, they're asleep. They're waiting to hear that trumpet sound, and let me put it to you this way, they're going to get a six-foot head start over you if you're still alive and remain. You ought to be jumping and hooping and hollering right now going, Oh, my so-and-so out there, I don't have to worry about them. Their spirit's in the hand of the Lord and their body's out there waiting to put on incorruption. They died in the flesh because the flesh can't see God. They died in, 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 in mortality because they're awaiting that transformation of putting on immortality. What does immortality mean? How long does that last? Forever. I don't want to, I don't want to continue in this body. I want to be not corrupt anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay? The next verse it says, it says, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
Why I'm saying this a third time, always abounding in the work of the Lord, is because it leads to our next part, which is occupy. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So we're not just to be blobs here on this earth. There are things to do, right? What should we be doing right now, Connie, while we're here on this earth? Hiding in our closet, wondering what's going to happen next, uh, uh, praying, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah, we do know what to do. Mm -hmm. We're to live our lives. We're to live out our salvation. Work out your own salvation, Hebrews mm -hmm. says, okay? What is the next one here? Uh, let's go to Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Love Luke's writing. Luke chapter 19. And I just mentioned the word occupy. It said, where it said there at the end, how, how neat these kind of go together. It says uh, there again, let me read 1 Corinthians 15, the last part of 15. Uh, 50, it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, and be the church. That's the church. That's the believers, folks. you got to understand that. This is to the believers. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What does the Gospel of Luke say? Luke chapter 19. I want you to understand this. This is a long verse. I'm going to ask Connie to help me out here. In fact, Connie, go ahead and get us started. Uh, if you would, you have your Bible there? Mm -hmm. I didn't give her this as a as a reference. But I'll uh, turn. If you've, if you've never been taught this before in a Sunday school class or in your church, turn to Luke chapter 19. This was fascinating. I had no idea that I was going to put this part in here, but the Lord showed me this. I looked up one word, and it led me to this in my big concordance. Like I said, I don't have a computer. I don't have anything. Turn to Luke chapter 19, and let's start in verse 11. Connie, read 11 through 17, and let's bring out a few little things about this. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was not at Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Mm. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, say, uh, no, while we're reading this, I want you to be mulling on your mind. I wonder who that's talking about. I'm not going to tell you. I just, want to, I just want to ask you the question. I wonder who that's talking about. Man came down Jesus. and went away for a little while and and claimed a kingdom, then came back and he's talking to these servants that he, he, he's told to occupy. I'm just going to leave it with you. I, I, want, I want to ask you the question. I want who that's talking who that guy is there. Verse 18 says, And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pan hath, uh, pound hath gained five pounds. Now, I wrote in some Bible, some one of the versions somewhere about what a pound is. It's about three months wages for a regular labor, like about $16 for each of them there. So that was quite a bit of money to some people. It'd be a lot of money, $16 to a lot of money to me. It'd buy uh, almost four gallons of gas today, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. About four, three, four gallons of gas, yeah. Uh, 19 says, and he said, likewise to him, be thou also over uh, five cities. You, you've been diligent. You've, you've occupied. You've worked. You've been busy. This is what that means. That's what occupy means. You, you're TCB and you're taking care of business. 20 says, and another came saying, Lord, behold, here's thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Yeah. Oh, it's all nice and safe. Everything that you gave me, I put it right here. It's all bundled up, and I've kept it over here to the side. It don't, it's not even dusty. Well, let's see what the Lord said. This Lord says. 21 says, For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that uh, thou layest down not, and repeatest, um, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. 
Thou knewest that I was an austere man. <clears throat> Taking that I laid not down, and, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. He's been useful. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you that thou, uh, uh, unto everyone that which thou hast given, and from him that has not, even that he shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies which would not, that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Now remember we started off <coughs> when you first read, you said there was this man and a lot of them looked at him and said, oh, we hate, we hate him. 14 there, verse 14 of Luke 19. It says, but the citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man reign over us. Wonder who that's talking about. Not going to say. I know you know. You're, you're shaking head. she got a big grin on her face. I know she knows who it is. I'm just going to leave that with you. I wonder who that is. Who is it that people hate today for no reason? I only talked about uh, uh, mercy and the, the forgiveness of sins and claiming his own and eternal life and healing people. And he's going away and he's claimed the kingdom and he's coming back. He told them he was coming back. Some of them worked for him. Some of them occupied. And then there was the one or two there uh, in this story, but it represents a whole lot that says, I'm not going to do nothing because I fear him. And, and it's not with a reverence fear. It's just that I don't want, he's an austere man. He has a name for himself. Wherever he goes, people do what he says because of whatever reason. I don't really know him. And so I'm just going to take what he gave me and put it over here to the side. Are you doing that today? Are you ready to stand before the Lord here in this story or the Lord of heaven and answer for what he's given you and you haven't done anything with? Are you ready to stand and say, look what you gave me and look what I've done with it? That's that story. Have mm -hmm. you ever thought about that? Occupy. Occupy, folks. We've been given a commandment to occupy. If you've received the message, if you've received what's been preached, uh, then you're to occupy. There are things to do for believers. Did you know that? Amen. What's the next one? Do you have another one? Uh, we have... Um, the second Peter. Oh, wait, just, just a minute. Um, not yet. I'm not even looking at my notes. I hope I'm doing these in order. Um, let me, let's me let go to Luke. I, the, reading the Bible is, is really interesting to me. I don't have to teach anything. Just read the Word. It's already there, right? Let's go to Luke chapter 17. Back a few pages there. Um, and let me start in 24. This is going to be quite a few out here. Luke chapter 17, verse 24 says, For as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven shineth into the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first I must suffer many things and be rejected. It actually says be rejected there. Mm -hmm. Some people just don't understand it. They will not understand that this man, Jesus, had a lot of people that rejected him. Mm -hmm. Rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so, uh, Noah, so shall also the days of the Son of Man be. How, it was, remember how peaceful it was in Noah's days? Remember how everybody loved everybody and everybody was just getting along with everybody and it was just one big, happy, big church here on this earth and everybody was just praising the Lord and and just flitting around, you could just hear flute music in the background, you know, and everything was, no, it was not. It was chaotic, it was terroristic, it was murdering, it was thieving, it was anything and everything like it is today. Like it is today. Do you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. here? Okay. N understand, as in the days of Noah, so shall it also be uh, in the days of the son, when the Son of Man. What is he talking about? The day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you ready? Verse 27 says, They did eat and drank and married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. They weren't ready. Noah and his wife and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives believed the word of the Lord. It said, Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he told his family, and his family did what the man said do. Mm -hmm. And they built an ark, 
which was salvation. That's what it represented, it, it represented at that time and still does. But the world was drinking and eating and having a bunch of sex, apparently, because it talked about many wives there being married and was going about their business. Gee, do we see that today, folks? Do we see that going on today? Jesus said, just like it was in that day, I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. We're at 30 minutes. We're at 30 minutes? Okay, mm -hmm. good. Let's wrap this one up and we'll go, we'll dot, dot, dot it. How about that? Okay. Verse 28 says, likewise, also it was in the days of Lot. <laughs> they did eat and drank. They uh, bought and sold and planted. They builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And destroyed them all. The ones that stayed there, the ones that were self-indulgent, the ones that wanted to be there. And why did Mrs. Lot turn into a pill of fire? She was leaving, but what did she do? She looked back. She looked back. She wasn't ready. Okay? Even, verse 30 says, Even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. Verse 34, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, uh, one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Now, that's not talking about homosexuality. I'll, in fact, the mm -hmm. whole just let me, let me read this. I'll tell you what this is talking about. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Verse 36, two men shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Now, if you'll notice there, one was at night and the other's at day. Why did, they, why did they say that? Because the Lord knows what he created. And over here, it's uh, almost 7 o'clock p.m. But over there, across the pond, it's fixed to be, night, uh, fixed to be the next morning. So he knows that. Okay? And he's not talking about homosexuality or lesbianism there. He's talking about two people who lay down at 6 o'clock in the evening. It gets dark. It does now. It's the right time. Leave it alone, government. The gist of that is when it's time to come, that's when it's going to happen. That's what that's talking about there. That's Luke chapter uh, 17. And we're going to have to dot it there because I want to do the rest of this in a, a little bit bigger scheme. Uh, so mark in your Bible um, those verses that we've talked about. And I want to continue to ask the, you the question, are you ready? Are you ready? Because, folks, just as John, well, I'm going to start back at the beginning, just as John, the gospel writer and the epistle writer and the revelator, saw Christ Jesus. He saw him when he was a young man. He saw him die on the cross he saw when he was ascended into heaven, he, he came forth from the grave, and then he saw him in the revelation. He was ready. So if all that was true and written down, and if you watched last week and week before study about we've seen and handled and heard and everything else, and read and seen with our own eyes and handled with our own hands, this one, uh, the one that Saul was transformed into Paul and preached about, if they were ready for that, folks, let me ask you, are you ready today? Because we're going to stand before this Christ Jesus. Are you ready? Let me leave you with that question. We'll get to the rest of it. We've got a couple more pretty good size um, scriptures to go over, and I'll, uh, we'll go over some more of these again next week. But that's the question for this lesson today and next week. Should we still be here? Are you ready? You got any comments? No. I think we got it. Are you ready? Yes. Good. I'm are ready. ready. How are you ready? I I love the Lord and I trust in Him as my Savior. Gee, that seems so hard to do. He's called you out. You're one of His and you trust in Him. You read His Word. You mm -hmm. obey His Word. If you if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You're one of your gods. That's that's how that works. Father God has called you out. The Son has revealed Himself. He's been revealed. Salvation has been revealed. So that's that's how that works. Okay, we're gonna do some more revelation and second Peter. Talk about the fervent heat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, are you ready? Uh, we're all going to stand before him. So, which one are you ready for? All right.